In this webcast, we're going to take a closer look at the transition state for their reactions. We're going to take a look at this particular reaction, our hydroxide and phenol, as we've seen previously, and look at the transition state for this one-step reaction. As we've seen previously, this transition state is the maximum on our reaction coordinate diagram. And our transition state is not an intermediate, and it's not a stable species that can stay around and be studied. However, we can take an educated guess at what our transition state is going to look like. We can calculate it using WebMO if we would like to, but we can also use some of our intuition to give us an idea of what it's going to look like. The intuition we're going to use is our curved arrow notation. The arrow here on our hydroxide, as we saw previously, attacks the sigma star orbital of our OH bond, and then the OH electrons localize onto our oxygen. And through the course of this reaction, we form our products, our phenolate, and water. The transition state is going to be halfway between the two, halfway between our reactants and our products. In drawing our transition state, we're going to average what we see. First of all, we're going to take a look at the bonds that are formed. In our reactants, we don't have a bond between our hydroxide oxygen and this other hydrogen. However, we do see that in our products. So we started off with zero bonds, we ended with one bond, so therefore in our transition state we're going to have half of a bond. And that is what we see here, designated by our dashed line between the hydrogen and our OH. This is a developing bond, and it's a half bond in our transition state structure. We also see a diminishing bond, or a half bond in this case, between our phenol OH bond, which exists in our reactants, but is broken through the course of our reaction. So therefore, in our transition state, we have half of a bond. Our diminishing bond is shown here. Notice as well the, the geometry of these bonds that are being formed. Because this is a sigma-type reaction, it's a coaxial overlap between the N on our OH- and the sigma star, which runs directly on the line between our O and our H. And that's why we have that particular geometry in our transition state as well. Another thing to look at is the charges. Charges are just like bonds in this case. You average the two. Since we started off with a negative charge on our hydroxide, and we end with no charge on water, the overall charge on that oxygen is going to be a partial negative, because we started with the minus one, ended with zero, therefore in our transition state structure we have a partial negative. We also see that on our other oxygen, on our phenol. We started with no charge, we end with a negative charge, so therefore we have a partial negative charge on that phenol oxygen. And we designate this entire transition state structure by having this double dagger shown here highlighted in yellow. Whenever you see that particular symbol, we're always going to be talking about transition states. We can also describe our transition states as being either early transition states or late transition states. And this is going to depend on whether we are going downhill in energy or uphill in energy. This is known as the Hammond postulate. In our first case, our beginning state is going to be higher in energy than our ending state. We go up in energy to our transition state and then go downhill to a state that is lower in energy than what we began with. Based on the Hammond postulate, the transition state that we have is going to look the most like the beginning state instead of the end state. We call this an early transition state for this reason. The bond making and bond breaking is going to be early in this reaction step because it's going to look more like our beginning state structure. In our second case, when we go up in energy from our beginning state, climbing this mountain, getting to a transition state, and ending at a state that's higher in energy than what we began with, this is a late transition state because that transition state will resemble the products more than it will the reactants.